Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the GOP Report podcast. This is season three, episode six, um, and soon seven. Um, and I am here today with uh, everyone who's been a co-host this year, right? I get, you guys have all been here this year. It's it's the annual reunion. Um, I have, of course, Jeff from DLP Town Square. And uh, Patrick from the DLP 14. Hi, everybody. And Arvid from Travel to the Magic. Hello. And Sadie is back with us today from, wait, what is your account with um, with Jack? Um, Disney Explorers. Disney, wait, what is it? That's Jack's one, but mine is just Disney Sadie. Nice. Oh, sorry, I thought it was like a common account, Disney Sadie. We don't talk about Jack then. Uh, <laughs> he's going to text me later. Uh, so on the last episode, we promised you a year in review. And well, you know what? Here we are. It is December 30th. Uh, no, 29. Is it 29? 30? I don't even know. December 29. And we are about to embark on 12 months of a review of 2022. But don't you worry. We're doing this over two episodes. So you'll get another episode tomorrow. Or, um, you know, if you're listening later, uh, you get two episodes on your list in your podcast app. Uh, uh, just so that we don't just ramble for for three hours in your ears. Um, I mean, we will <laughs> ramble. It will just be spread over two episodes of rambling instead of one. Yeah, so now it's just going to be basically six hours over two yeah. episodes. Anyway, we're going to try to move this along. So we have, obviously, we've uh, researched everything that happened in 2022. It was, such, um, it was such an eventful year. I cannot recall when was the last time we had such an eventful year. Land openings, anniversaries... Three, drama. 13. <laughs> Ratatouille. A lot. Sorry? Ratatouille, 2014, 13. I don't know, something like that. 2014, right. yeah. But that was like one thing, though. No, we had the, the the Spring Festival, Swing into Spring Arrive that year. Right, but entertainment doesn't count. <laughs> Okay, sorry, 30th so anniversary. Disney, yeah, no, yeah, Disney and Paris would like to have a award with you if entertainment doesn't count. That's like the last eight years. In which case, like, it was a it was a very slow year this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what if you remove entertainment from anything Disney and Paris? There's not a lot left, but that's okay because we actually do have great entertainment. This is me trying to save myself. Um, all right, so let's just get into it and uh, keep things moving. Let's start with January 2022. It's going to be an easy one um, and, um, because January is usually a dead month and we are, we're about to experience that probably once again. Um, but it was it was really the start. Um, I mean, Disneyland Paris 30th anniversary had been teased a little bit by the end of 2021, but in January 2022 is when we really started um to see everything come into place um there was uh you know the the window the window dressing started arriving the new brochure came out the visuals um and this is where we started to see exactly what we're in for um including the show dream and shine bride i remember everyone was like where are those floats um and i don't know they've grown on everyone no do you guys like the floats I, I still have a little bit of like, what is up with these floats? I don't know. I'm just more of a classical type of float type of guy. I know we had the discussion before Ben and it's like timeless and stuff that they want to do with it, but it, I don't know. They still haven't grown to me. I like the show a lot, just not the floats. Yeah, I was just watching if... videos. I was watching videos of like Walt Disney World's like 50th cavalcade that they do. And like they have like as far as I'm aware, or the, what I saw was like they had one flow, and it didn't look too dissimilar. And maybe it looked a bit more dressed, but it was just still kind of basic, kind of like, hey, it's just a floating platform type thing. Enjoy. So I don't know. I, I still I'm like I'm not. They're not like I'm not going to be like oh, I'm going to miss those floats. But like I suppose they had to make choices on money, and they do the job, and they look pretty okay with the theme. And I I don't hate them, but I'm not like oh I love them. I feel like those in, in, Cav- like in cavalcade be... version, it doesn't work though, like at all. Sorry? In the cavalcade version for Halloween and Christmas, oh, it just has not worked at all. Yeah, I agree. When you just have one, it doesn't quite work. And I feel like, uh, I mean, we're, we're already jumping to October here, but I feel like they should just have stop the show, or maybe have just a little um, um, a cavalcade before Stars on Parade to just 
say, oh, look, you know, you get to see the floats, but like, how many, I don't know how many times, four times, six times a day? You're like, oh. I, I, I was like again. hanging around on Main Street and it's just like every so often you just heard the music. Like, oh, okay, it's not very good. Yeah. And people who don't really know are like, oh, yay, show. And they're like, oh, that's, that's it. Yeah. Was that I it? Yeah. I saw was, that uh... many times of people like, you know, crowds gathering around and then obviously it just kind of, goes past and the families look around they're like oh that that was it oh okay oh yeah there goes judy hops and miguel bye yeah <laughs> i mean in terms of um in january we also saw a lot of the key visuals and the design for the anniversary we already had seen the logo with this awesome you know 30 that looks like mickey that was stolen from disney vacation club mm -hmm. and um but the colors and everything i think they did really good with that it was pretty good anniversary when it comes to that. And also we, this is when we learn about um, the drones uh, and they made this announcement because obviously they, they needed to start testing them. So um, they had to talk about it. And we first learned that drones were going to be in the show. And, and since then, I think that this has been the biggest hit of the entire anniversary. Um, and they're probably going to start stealing it, that it, from us it's kind of like has that effect that like i would imagine i wasn't around when dreams started but it kind of has that every time you see the drones come out every they, it's like it's like when there's disney illuminations and they like frozen bit comes on and everyone's like whoa but it's like it's like that but like even more because people are like oh my god and i think the word is out. i i I'm, i'd be very surprised if there were people who were like because, you know, it's been used so much on the visuals and stuff like that. I'd be very surprised if people were walking and be like, oh my God, I didn't know there was going to be drones. But like, even like having seen it a few times myself, it's still like top tier. And nobody, I don't think anyone has has the, has kind of quite pipped it yet. Even though uh, I'm sure they'll probably try and start doing some things with it. But it's still really cool to see. And I think that like, you know, even the, the GLP 30 was quite a small celebration in that like there wasn't maybe massive things that were like completely new and whatever but like it's really effective to show that they can that if they they put their focus on specific things and they actually made something that was quite nice i'm looking forward to seeing where it goes because you, you saw the guy i don't know how many people saw it but that was the guy that did the encanto drones in his garden for yeah. christmas this year and like yeah. that looks insane you feel like that's where we're probably going and I'm, I'm jumping again but when we'll talk about avengers campus in july on the, the next episode <laughs> Um, you know, they started applying the drones then to Avengers Campus. They started applying them to uh, Bastille Day. They start so, mm, yeah. Uh, where are we going with this? Is it going to be the shortbread cookie, or how long is it going to take for people to be like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll see that. Everywhere. But so far, people are still amazed. And like you said, Patrick, it's just this: how many Disney shows currently do you get? all of Central Plaza, apart from stupid frozen, um, do you get all of Central Plaza just literally gasping, being like, oh, you know, and you yeah. hear it, it's just thousands of people just going like, oh, at the same time. So it's really cool. Um, I sort of experienced it, even though it's an old hat technique. When I was in Disney World earlier in the month, like Tinkerbell flying to the castle, that still gets everyone going, whoa. Yeah. I think this isn't going away for a while. Like I think yeah. and, people are still going and, to and, and about the Tinkerbell thing, though, I was watching a documentary from some other Disney guy who put it all together. It's been flying since, what, like 1957? Yeah. And, and I still, still get like, I, I, I still yeah. get goosebumps when I see her fly, which is just weird. But Am yeah. I allowed am I allowed to say that I feel like it's really good? Like, because like it's a bit like like I don't want to derail it too much. But it's a bit like when I went to like Haunted Mansion for the first time in Disneyland and you go into the room, the seance room. I don't know. I think it's Madame Leoa. I, I don't know if it's yeah. the same. But you go into the same room and she's like, like instead of just like wobbling kind of like on a table in, in the Phantom Manor, she's like fly, like, it, and I was like, yeah. am I meant to pretend not to see all the wires? And like, because I was like, wires, 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 like holding this like glass ball up. And the thing that kind of really takes a little bit of the magic away from me with this thing about, which is why I prefer drones, is because during the day, you're like, oh, there's like seven different wires that's just like randomly like above the castle or whatever. Whereas like with the drones, you're like, I was here all day and I didn't see anything that looked like that. And then you're like, boom, they're just there. I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a little bit, I haven't seen the Tinkerbell or Buzz or Nemo or whatever in, in person. So maybe when you're in person, you're like, wow, that's so cool. But like just from looking at videos, I'm like, mm, looks a little bit 
tacky but uh, that's just my opinion whereas um i feel like the drones are like whoa like it's completely like i don't know strangely i don't notice the wires in the day i i guess they're probably Same. there and they're probably visible but i i don't oh I've no never really I've looked up twice. and gone oh look I've, there's a wire I, i've been twice and i was like oh okay so like when you're taking pictures of like trying to get nice pictures of main street i'm like okay so these wires are just going to be in my picture of her like you know there's like even trying to yeah. angle it to try and make sure they're not there or whatever. Yeah, but that's yeah, because i'm so used to things you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I've just but, but, never noticed it. Like it's never, it's never been something I've noticed when I'm walking around. You know, I took my, I took my parents, and in September it was the first time I took my parents. Um, I'm a bad fan. I didn't take my parents, and um, my dad thought my dad didn't realize it was drones. And I'm like, what do you think it was? Like some kind of structure? Like how did those lights get up there? Like some giant structure just went up there? It's kind of funny to see people's reactions. I don't want to tell them anything. I was just wanting to see. Their reaction and my dad was like oh that was drones i'm like yeah well how do you think this happened like just magic i don't know um, I, I am curious though to, to see how long they can keep going with with set amount of drones right because there's a lot of drones in the air and i'm just not quite sure how well they're equipped to do this all days of all days of the year whatever wind because they, they've been going up with quite high winds so i'm just curious once the real maintenance comes in and they have to start swapping out entire drones, what will happen at that point? I have seen some fall quite a few times. Well, and, and I, I wanted to say that, yeah, like I actually see now even at some drones quite drift off the mm. point that they have to be at, right? You see like in the three, all of a sudden you see one drone, like maybe 10, 15 feet away. Yeah. It's like, okay, something is Don't off. Worry, there, they're, but... they're currently reprogramming to say 100. <laughs> uh, well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um, so yeah, I mean, so we learned about all this stuff, and also uh, we had this little documentary with a company that makes the drones, and you know, they're a French company, a uh, French startup, about five, six years old. So um, good for them. I hope I hope Disneyland Paris just realizes what they have here, and that they, because just to say what Arvid was saying about like because the maintenance is going to be like a thing, and they're going to have to like invest more into it to kind of keep the like, keep it going and whatever. As I would like, I hope that Disney on Paris realizes that this is, but to be fair, to be fair to Disney on Paris, with dreams, they realized that what they were on, they were onto a thing and they tried to keep developing it and added fountains and all that kind of things. So like, I'd hope that they would continue to de develop it because it does like, you know, even if it's not being used at the castle, it could be used in Marvel or even if it's not being used in Marvel, it could be used for something else. Like it's all, they, they can always find something that will still get that hold. Like magic, like like the, nobody else is doing, and the, and like in, they're not doing as far as I'm aware, they're not doing it in your world prepare or whatever. So like it's like it's like that's like Disney magic things that like people will be like, oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, in Henry, we also had the return of Stars on Parade because entertainment yeah, doesn't know, count. We tend we tend to forget that January 2021 was still uh, quite a lot in the COVID era. Um. We had to wear masks still. I'm pretty sure. In January. Yeah, 2020. Wasn't it 2022? Yeah, not 2021. Oh, yeah, 2022. <laughs> I, I guess. I like the AG team. I don't really. Know <laughs> um, yeah, the mask thing finished in like February, I think. I something remember. like that, I feel. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Stars on Parade return. I mean, I don't know. If you listen to the podcast before, you know what I think of that parade. And nothing, nothing to do about the performers who are fantastic or the few floats that debuted in 2017, but the overall ensemble is just very tired. But hey, you know, it was it was a moment. It was a moment, it returns. It hadn't been performed since early 2020. So um, it was almost two years without Stars on Parade. It was nice to get the day parade back. Um, but yeah, that's-, that's I watched it for the first time in, I watched it for the first time in many years in November. And yeah, I had that thing where I, I've never really loved it. And I watched it again. I was like, I, I still don't really love this. No. They had they had a yeah. few documentaries on French TV over the holidays. And um every time they do those, you know, those those like documentaries, they say, Oh, the parade, it's the best, it's the biggest moment of the day. Everyone comes to see the parade and it has stars in their eyes. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> well, it, it, it's still the biggest moment of the day. It's just, it feels like it's time for something new. I don't think we're going to get it for a while, but it, it feels yeah. like it's time. Yeah. Um, even if, even a slight refresh, like just switch out that, uh, switch out the 
the crush float and the pull with literally anything else. And it would make, yeah. even though, even though those Tokyo floats are looking real tired, uh, but like even just get rid because like obviously there's a, like an issue with with with, with the crush flow because it's just not been working in such a long time. Get rid of it, bring in something new, uh, like you know, and like even whatever they 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 would just judge it up a little bit, and then it would, there's been so many of, hits recently that they could include in a parade. I'm pretty you convinced know, that one day Moana you know that they're Coco to Encanto to like yeah. come on, there are options you know the... there. You know the bit by the castle when it comes onto Central Plaza and it comes off the curb onto the road. Oh yeah. And you just sort of stand there and you watch the Lion King float. One day, yeah. that's going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you know we're also going to talk about particular things that happen in the parks. And um, January was Polka Dot Day, and it was weirdly a thing, kind of a big thing. Mini had their own. Photo location with some polka dot thing, and it was like the buttons, and it was all those things. They just decided to just do polka dot day. And, like, and the outfits, right? With the designer, or was that was that a different day with the purple no, that was, pajamas? Um, that, oh, that, that was, was International um, Women's Day. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I think no, that, that was the thirtieth, right? It was the thirtieth. Was it a Stella McCartney thing? Yeah, yeah, no, but I think it was part. Of, they they did put in the blurb as like Women's Day and it lasted for like a month. Oh, uh, right, okay. Well, it oh, was right. part of them. Yeah. February. Oh, of course, because the thirtieth started early. Yeah. <laughs> in February, we got, of course, more DLP thirty previews. Um, and one thing we discovered in February was the merchandise and the food. Um, and they did actually pretty good. Uh, with most of the merchandise, even though they just had to include one of those weird urban looking Disney dash land dash Paris best day ever, I don't know, thing. And they make but those also like super line, premium lines, right? As well. They do like those premium oh, lines where they like, go, like, let's try something new, like a coffee grinder. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're on sale now. So do you know when you were saying at the top of the show that it would be nice to like like January is quite a down season. I, I, I don't want to be taking swings at like merch again, but the DLP turning merch in general did quite well. Like the core line, like the like the with the purple and the colours and whatever, that core line did quite well. And I know that you know a lot of people enjoy it, and I know I have some parts, some parts of that collection myself. I like they did this whole grand finale thing. It would be great if there was like some a bit more of a judged kind of like judged up kind of merch like oh here's some new things like here's some blah 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 I don't know whatever but like they could like because like they've done a good job on the core line of the merch it would be nice if they would give us like hey grand finale get these before they go kind of type things but they won't so sorry maybe I mean we're going to get more info about grand finale in January so maybe I don't know if they have some merch to be honest I don't know they might um they also came in strong with the food, um, which was not horrible. <laughs> uh, and they brought in some favorites from the US. Um, I mean, it was it was done. I don't know. Have you guys tried the turkey leg? Yes. It's, it's delicious. It's so yeah, good. It's I actually it. good. And it looks I hate funny. It. <laughs> it looks funny. It's so much nicer than the American ones, which is just yeah. gross. I think the Paris one is also gross, though. Oh, it's for, don't get don't get me wrong. I'm not ordering it again. But okay, like, I, had I, it, I, would, I had it I one day. I would eat it again. It was actually really tasty. I would agree. I, I really liked it. It's yeah, I had it once. The gym is good. Yeah, I had it once, just like because it was the only thing I, still open, and I was like, "Well, let, let's go for it. Let's try it." And I, I didn't hate it. I think it Sadie nice. and I are. I think Sadie and I are ordering it for different reasons than Ben is. Though, to be fair, we're ordering <laughs> it because we're not t- thinking about going to the gym. <laughs> it's a good protein per euro ratio. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think what happened is that they're using this barbecue sauce on it, which is quite dark. And so when you take a photo of it, I remember when we posted on the account, everyone was like, "It's burnt." And actually, it's not burnt. It just looks burnt. But I feel like that's still something that the food team is not always picking up on. I'm like, sure, it is not burnt. It tastes okay. If it looks burnt, then you should work on a solution to make it 
look not for it. But in the US, was it the turkey legs, for... the thing that they put out the announcement for, it was like, hey, we've got turkey legs. Some people went to look for it and they went, we don't have turkey legs right now. We've got tomorrow. them soon. Yeah. We were like, yeah. oh, we're going to launch them tomorrow with Mickey Bears. And we were like, everyone was like looking around for them. And we're like, yeah, but we're going to have them. Last month's cafe won't have them until next week. You're like, so not tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. They're good. Um, we also got the buckets of Dole Whip for five euros, which is like the best Dole Whip deal, I think, in the entirety of all the Disney parks. Um, yeah. I, they give you, I mean, like, if you're like, really into like, oh, Ben and Jerry's size, <laughs> if, you, if you're into your Dole Whip and you really want to, like, you really want your best Dole Whip to price, if you're like, say, if you're living, if you're listening to this and you live in like the center of the United States of America, price apply to Paris and you'll probably get more Dole Whip for your money than mm-hmm. going to like California or Walt Disney World and like spending way more on way less Dole Whip. You, if you just really care about Dole Whip. We, do I have the part for you? Uh, yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It is not confused exactly by the name the though. Same <laughs> consistency. It is the same product, but the machine that makes it makes it uh, because then I had it in uh, Disneyland, and and this it, the U.S. version is a little bit more smooth, whether the Paris ones is a little bit more like slushy. You know what I mean? Is that fair? Yeah. 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 I think it's just a different machine, but it's the same product, so it tastes the same. Which I mean, it is it is pineapple sorbet, like it's not really top tip. I wish, I wish they just call it Dole Whip. Ask ask for them not to put the syrup on top of it. I think they've stopped doing that yeah. in general. Yeah, because yeah, like it's nice with that. But but the issue that I still have with this is at least in in Anaheim or in Florida for that matter, if you do go, you will get it twenty four seven, right? It's always available. Doesn't matter which day of the week, which month of the year. <laughs> you go to Paris, it's like, it's going to be hit or miss if you're going to get it. And I've yeah, been there a couple of times when it was scorching hot and it was like, <laughs> no, they're closed. I'm like, you serious? Yeah, but then in the middle of February when it's like three degrees, they'd be like, would you like a dollar? <laughs> with, like, with, I don't get that. I was, I was, I was in, I was in uh, Disney Paris. Sorry, we're jumping to December. I was in, uh, I was in Disney Paris there a couple of weeks ago and Martyr Refreshments, who also were, I know we're going to talk about them debuting like some nice little treats and whatever, but Martyr Refreshments with their like three ice creams that they had, had no queue, no queue. So I was like, of course I have to get one. I don't care how cold it is. There was no queue and they have tasty treats. Yeah. So I was like, with like my ice cream walking around, I had a great time. Um, in February, we also got some some good news from the restaurants, which let's face it, doesn't happen very often. And we'll talk about that later on the year um, when <laughs> Walt and Toad Hall reopened, and they were kind of like billed as like part of DLP thirty, you know, like happy anniversary, we're reopening restaurants that should never have been closed in the first place. But you know, and Walt's reopened, and this is also like important when we're going to talk about what happened in December. Reopened with sort of like a very reasonably priced menu. Um, it was 40, 38, 40, 42, something for yeah, a three course 40, yeah. menu, which obviously now we'll talk about that in December has changed a lot. Everything got repriced, and you know, the you know, the honeymoon is over with Walt, so you know, <laughs> like it's gonna like bankrupt you. Um, but Toad Hall also reopened, and I was sort of like out of the blue. No one expected this to reopen with, with some vegan fish. Uh, the fish and chip is back. Um, with also... the themed, um, the themed newspaper. Um, yeah. Uh, whatever right. it's called, like the yeah. the, the, what do you call them? I don't know. Rapper. Rapper. That's it. N- yeah. We're in that Rapper. week between Christmas and New Year. Cover, Nothing makes like, sense basket anymore. Cover rapper. I don't know. Um, yeah, and um, they also debuted this like total oh. dessert thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, yeah. the, the specialty cheese, dessert, cherries, whatever it was called, right? <laughs> I think, and you know, this is a, this is an issue with the red velvet can I just, with the can curry I just cheese go on a thing. I know about partnership. <laughs> I appreciate all the work that they do. I know it's like an important part of the business, and it's important to have you know brand partnership. And you know, Walt's been doing it since park opens and stuff. But like, could they try? the stuff that they put in the park before approving the partnership. I feel like they're really going out all out with those announcements. We're working with this brand, with this brand, with this brand. They're going to make new things for the parks. But like, can you taste them? Can you just like oversee a little bit more what they do and put it in the parks? Like, because if you've tried that dessert at Toad Hall, it's not, I mean, it's not disgusting. Like I wouldn't spit it out, but 
it's it's like kind of salty and it has the like are we, are we start are we starting a new part of the DLP report podcast where it's spit or swallow <laughs> 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 But have you tried the one, so the same partnership, the, the Kiri thing, at the the one by Cars, the, uh, oh, the yeah. road trip, the, the, the laugh and go. They have like the little cupcake and it's like got Ooh. Kiri cheese in the middle. Ooh. And like I was trying it and they said it was Kiri cheese frosting. I was like, well, the frosting's fine. And I bite into the middle of the cake and just cheese just starts oozing out. I'm like, nobody has asked for cake and cheese. <laughs> no, no, just no. So that one definitely spit. I would not eat that one. Yeah. But that's a good concept, Patrick. I like it. We should start Oh my like god, Disney. we are actually starting this. We've started Disney that. Eliminations. <laughs> spit or swallow. Spit, spit or swallow. <laughs> spit. <laughs> oh god. Okay. We've got um, to that part of the podcast. <laughs> it's time for Illumination yeah, Store. <laughs> Let's finish February before we just, you know, lose track of everything. Um, February was a good month for Avengers Campus. We're not going to go over in all the little things that we unveiled one by one, but there was a lot of construction happening because, let's face it, that land opened. I think the last the last coat of paint was given the day before it opened. Um, the Queen landed, and that was a big moment. Um, they had this whole thing during the night when they craned it onto the platform. I mean, of course, it flies, so they flew on the platform, whatever. Um, and it was a big oh, they, they didn't try to hide it. Was, it was a crane. <laughs> it was a crane, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. On the photos, you can see that. <laughs> they, they didn't try and hide it. Like, they're, even in the video, they're just, like, lower. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny because I feel like now Avengers Campus feels like it's been open for six years. It actually has been six months, uh, not even. Um, but that was a big moment, and the entire imaginary team was there. Um, and just for us, we, we were very excited for the opening of that land. And then, you know, then it opened. But anyway, so we'll that, that, later. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. So that was February. Again, interesting month, but I feel like even we're still in like the buildup of everything that was going to happen in the year. Um, uh, in March, March was a very big month for TLP 30 because this is when everything launched. Um, we get to see Dream and Shine Brighter for the first time. And we get to see Disney Delight. We get to see the Gardens of Wonder. We haven't talked about that. What do you guys think about the gardens? I, you know, last time I was there, now they've been there for like six months. Um, they made up some kind of resin and it feels like, you know that, you know that when you put a plastic plate to the dishwasher too many times and it loses all its color. <laughs> Most of the Gardens of Wonder are like a light shade of silver now. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, they should have just put them in the hotels. Just, just get rid of them now. Move them to the hotels, and it, I think it was a miss since the beginning. I mean, it's a, it was a great idea, I think. And I at least uh, what is it? Two, the two, three statues in front of the castle still are quite good. good but then the rest is just I th- yeah. No. I think it's too much as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, I still see a lot of people taking photos. Yeah, but there's just like think, you walk into Central Plaza, probably... and it's just like well, there's stuff everywhere. I think I think they're taking pictures to be like send it to their friends and be like who's this meant to be? <laughs> Damn. Okay, my drop from Patrick. Great. Uh, <laughs> no, it was good. Um, we were also promised all those like uh, you know fluorescent plants. To my knowledge, that did not happen. I don't think it really worked out, but you know. Um, and a uh, dream and shine brighter apart from the whole float thing, got really, really good reception when, you know, everyone is super excited for it to come back in January. Um, it is a modern show. So, you know, if you're a traditional Disneyland Paris fan, that may not be your thing, but I think it's grown on everyone quite a bit. Um, we got some new characters out of it that we don't normally see every day. You know, Nika Judy, Jody, jo- Judy, 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 Judy. Um, Jody, that's Kevin and Jody, the merchandise people, um, and um, Miguel. Um, Miguel was there, and then yeah, just the music is great. I think it was it was a hit. It is a hit, and it's coming back, and people are really excited for it. Um, Disney Delight, like we talked about, was the big hit. Remember that it used to be a two part thing, and it used to be some of the <laughs> before, and then some of it after, and then they were like. Actually, no, we're going to move it because 
people really start really just coming here they for Disney made, Delight. They don't want to wait for after elimination. That was a lifesaver for us fans because it's like, oh, now you can leave after Disney Delight. You don't have to watch Disney animation. Which thing. everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> and they, Except they, this they, Christmas they, season where it's split again. Kind of. Is, oh, yeah. Um, With the Afterglow. Right. Like, it's not the same split, but it's there's like a split show. Yeah. Well, there's, there's like the party music at the ends, which is fun. But the drones don't come back out after the show, right? No, no, no. no. The, no, no the, afterglow is, the afterglow is different now. It's the with the castle turrets and the yeah. new stuff happening. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Disney did, like won all the awards. And um, yeah, well done. I think we hadn't had like, it's it proves again that in a completely different type of way, Disneyland Paris is again innovating like they did with Disney Dreams. Um, but with something completely different than all the other parks. I, I love when I see all the replies from fans from the from you know American parks who are like damn like why why don't we have this why how come you guys can well there's do a this there's a thing? missing nighttime show in Epcot now so and, that's coming and, and no and the answer to that is the American parks get plenty let us have this one thing please that's um, true. I don't think it's gonna last very long but I mean it's been almost a year now and so far they still don't have it so you know I, I think it's coming sooner than we think it's coming with a new show right that they're doing I, I feel on. like, I don't know, when they start thinking, well, we know that Ep- the Harmonious and Epcot's are ending. Uh, it um, just feels like that's what, that's where Epcot this is going. Epcot would be such a good venue for drones because you could have some 3D things in the middle of the lake that would be seen yeah. from all around. It would just be a... Uh... I feel even on January, like, aren't they starting the Disney 100 and on the 27th of January? Or, yeah, uh, that's, in, been... that's in Anaheim. That's in yeah, 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 yeah. No, but what I mean is um, it would be nice to see, do you know, the, when they added the, like, the archway over the castle because that came uh, as yeah. a second part. Like, I have to admit, seeing the archway over like Disneyland's castle, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that would be cool. Yeah. I guess it's a lot of logistics because the company that does it in France is not really Disney. It's a French company. I don't think they can just do it in the US. And so they probably have to research their own production company for those things. I'm sure there's loads of them sitting around in the US there. Yeah. If you've you've seen some of the drone stuff that they've done in Dubai or in Singapore, it is even next level compared to what we're having. But of course, we have it every single day. So that's the difference it's a show that's produced every day whether those are special events in those big cities they're sort of one-off but still there's a lot of room for improvements and a lot of other ideas and um you know it's continuing to evolve so um yeah so let's see what they do with the drones in paris i'm sure they have a lot of other things up their sleeve um soon. um what else happened in march uh Put that in because I thought that was like this. There's a scandal of the you know the fan community at the time is Disney Premier Access launched a crushed coaster, <laughs> so they could never figure out how to put uh fast pass. I cried, like, oh, it's too hard, too complicated. And then, of course, now you can pay 18 euros to ride crush, which arguably is probably the best value for money out of all the individual DPA products. Because that's the one that you're going to be running into in the morning. Um, and so at least if you buy that product, you won't have to do that, right? Compared to the other ones, like who wants to do a Phantom Matter or GPA? Um, sure, but I mean, you've, you've got, you sort of hit on what I think the problem with it is in that, well, FastPass didn't work and we're given this like long list of reasons why it didn't work. It, you know, it clogs it up. It's impossible for us to do it. And now it's like, well, now you can give us money to do it. It's all good. Right. Right. Well, that's the key, right? But money. So, yeah. When there's money, then uh, you either figure out a way or you just... Yeah, and the problems have all gone away because now you can pay. And even, yeah. like, the whole, even the whole, like, DPA system is kind of like, oh, but, yeah, like, now we're making money, it's fine, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, I've, yeah. It's like that, this, is, I this is a JPEG Disney all over, right? It's like the guest experience, eh, who cares? As long as we're making money, who, who cares? Yeah, but there's a lot less people who use DPA than they use FastPass. Sure, sure. So that doesn't clog up the lines as well as much as when FastPass used to be there. Like if you had an attraction that went down and then reopened, they would basically get all the FastPasses in, and the standby queue would not get to a regular 
So like an average wait time until like six hours later, and basically the attraction was shot for the day. Yeah, sure, but, the, but I, I the, guess the, the solution to that was like how they did it in the U.S. Disney parks. The 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 like solution was oh, it becomes a multi uh, a multi experience fast pass yeah. and you're like oh, I, can oh, go, right. I can use it for something else and and then the, the whole point would have been to be like oh okay so we're going to just like digitalize the fast pass system and fast pass is just going to be on the app now you just have to do it on the app and that's it and then you would then you can just bypass all those problems I don't know uh, like I think Disney Disney Premier Access for me doesn't really change a whole lot because I'm not a massive rides kind of guy like if a ride is like I'm that kind of guy that's like, oh, big Thunder Mountain's 20 minutes. Enjoy that 20 minute wait because I'm still not waiting 20 minutes for it. Uh, but like, you know, so like I understand, like, but like I do understand there are lots of people who have annual passes or who come to Disneyland Paris for different reasons. And a lot of those reasons are like rides and attractions. And I just even think DPA, fair enough for Crush. If you, I'm, I'm thinking about this guy that like is coming to like Disneyland Paris and it's a once in a lifetime trip and they're never like they live in the middle of America and they're going to be going to the American parts and Disneyland Paris is going to be their one time thing and they rock up at like one o'clock in the afternoon because like the flight or whatever so yeah like it's nice that they have like a way that they can get you on and you don't have to wait 150 minutes so you can go out go off and experience the park and we've got we've discussed it on the on the podcast before that like time is what you're spending in Disneyland Paris not like you know that's you you go in with a set amount of time and that's what you have to spend and you can't do everything but yeah, it's still a bit, it's still a bit poor form that it was, oh yeah, but money now, so it's fine. Uh, a bit yeah, like I mean, what we're going to talk about in December. They're like, oh yeah, quality of food, but fire enough money, whatever. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think we're, again, I don't think we're the, oh yeah, demographic for these as fans, as people who go often, like you said, if the queue is long, you'll just be like, oh, I'm just going to something else. Or I'll just, you know, like for, for me, when the parks become completely unmanageable, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not uh, just going to go home now, like, uh, because I know that, you know, I know I could come back, but obviously that's not everyone's, um, everyone doesn't have that possibility. And some people are coming for just a few days. And so that's where DPA comes into play. You can get Spider-Man, you can get Crush, you can get your favorite attraction if but you really I mean, want to, makes, like Cars World Trip for five euros. <laughs> it makes it ridiculously expensive though. And, and more complicated, I think, to visit. So you get a family that spends... I don't know, like maybe a thousand pounds or whatever for for a one week stay. Well, then you start bolting all the other stuff on top: food, which is also going up, the DPA if you want to do that. Like all of a sudden, your holiday becomes like crazy expensive. And instead of going, well, okay, maybe I can do this once every two years, you might think, okay, I've done it. I, I, but that's what I'm not coming again because it's too expensive. To less and spend more. That was the whole like cheapek approach. Sure, but, but so, I, mean, so, so I have two things, right? Uh, Jeff, I have one question for you, though. A whole week yeah. for a family, a thousand pounds. Which which hotel are you staying at with tickets? Uh, I was I was making it up, but I did do. We actually okay, ran like, some numbers. Um, we ran some numbers next so. to the Disney Arena in the lower tent. <laughs> we ran some numbers actually recently. Um, um, I don't know if Ben, you were following the conversation. We were running some numbers against um, Walt Disney World and Disneyland Paris for the same week, and like it really isn't that far away. In some cases, um, Disney World is more uh, is cheaper, even with the flights. It's starting to become at that point where you start looking at these things and you start going, "Oh, but I can go over there," and or I could go over there. And I think it's it's an That's interesting conversation. No, I feel like there's a whole part of the UK population, and I've met a lot of people like that who have been to Disneyland Paris once in their life, but they've been to Disney World fifty times, and like, oh yeah. Yeah, you know, Disneyland Paris, not really my thing, but every year we go to Disney World because it's the same price. Yeah. And it feels more and like I, an actual like vacation, I think, right? Yeah. But yeah. yeah, and exactly, that's your problem, right? Disneyland Paris should be more accessible to you because it's two hours away. And for some, for some reason, it's just not. And I mean, I'm going to digress again, but I feel like also Disneyland Paris doesn't have enough of that sort of like bubble resort there's too many areas and and disney village is actually the next topic but disney village is is you know is an eyesore and there's a lot of like construction and there's all those places you have to go through that's kind of like kicks you out like you see the train line you yeah know, you you're gonna have that problem station. a lot in the next couple of years that that's going to be hopefully. particularly noticeable soon but just to be blue, brutally honest there's just simply not enough new at disneyland paris for people that go to Disney, Walt Disney World every year, 
to like, like, you know, this year Walt Disney World has opened Guardians and it's going to open Tron and then next year it's going to be something else and then the year after that it's going to be something else. Whereas like Disneyland Paris can't really keep up with that like rhythm of like opening something big and new every year because we don't get enough visitors to like justify or whatever. But I, yeah, I do agree that like, you know, like pricing things out, like you can, if you were, if you're really, really smart about things, you can, you can get a cheap week in Disneyland or you can get a cheap week in Walt Disney World and, and it wouldn't be a huge amount more than what you would spend to go to Disneyland Paris. So I kind of, like, I do understand that they want this premium image and they want people to spend more and come less. And that's that's fair enough and that's a priority, but they, they need to find a fine balance about that as well because if they go too far, then it's just going to, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. Um, right, and then when you're in so, the, so park, the funny thing is though, a premium product too, right? So you can't have port in in Discovery. Like, <laughs> that's that's not a premium product right there. It's not a exactly. So, but but then, so I also listen to some uh, mayor based uh, podcasts, and they actually talk about it's cheaper for us to go to Disneyland Paris, right? They say, oh, I can spend a whole week or two weeks in Europe, include Disneyland Paris with it, instead of going a week to Walt Disney World or three or four days to to Disneyland. Now, the the thing though that I think for me is quite often a win in in Disney World or even Disneyland is that it becomes an actual resort stay, right? If I go to Disney mm-hmm. World, you need at least one day for each park maybe even two days. Disney Springs, you can easily spend an entire day in Disney Springs. While Disney Village, yeah, I, I walk through it because I need some breakfast and I walk through it when I go back home again, but I would not be able to spend like a whole morning or afternoon in there trying to shop because they just don't have anything that is unique. Um, and I think that's also something where you then look at the Disneyland Paris hotels is if I look at Walt Disney World or even Anaheim, the massive pools they have, the massive additional things you can do there so even, you know, just spending an afternoon in a pool, you're going to get bored in like Sequoia yeah. or whatever it yeah, might be. True. It's like, it's not fun to just stay there. And, and we stayed in, in a Grand Californian or a Disneyland hotel. And then we just spend the whole day in, in the pool. And it's not like we're bored at the end of the day. We're just like, oh, that was great. Like a I'd great day out of the park. I'd be interested to see what these people are pricing. Because when I'm looking at prices, and that's just probably because that's my price range, but that's unfortunate in the reality that it is. When I'm looking at pricing like an American Disney Park stay, I know Walt Disney World, or Disneyland, Walt Disney World, it's an all-star. There's absolutely no way that I'm going to like a moderate or a deluxe because I, I just no. Can't. Oh, come on. I can't see, just I ask can't your boyfriend. See, come on. I, I, I can't see. <laughs> I can't see. I can't. I need a sugar daddy. Um, but uh, I can't see. I can't see the value in it for me personally. But then another thing as well is like if I'm pricing, if I'm pricing a week in Disneyland, I'm like staying in a motel that's beside Disneyland, or I'm not staying in like the Grand California, or so like you know, yeah, fair enough. If you if you're if you're if you're if you're a moderate guy or you're like into like the deluxe resorts, yeah, you could totally plan probably a trip to this to like Europe for like two weeks for like the six thousand dollars that's going to cost you like for a week to stay in the deluxe. But like you know, the, the, I think it's important as well to like realize that like you know, like. Well, I, I think what it comes from is that when people from the from the US travel to, to Europe, they will spend two, three days in Disneyland Paris, spend yeah. the money to stay at Marvel or Sequoia or Newport, and then go elsewhere. They go into the city of yeah. Paris, Amsterdam, Berlin, or whatever. But if you go for a week to Walt Disney World, you're going to stay a week in Walt Disney World. You're not going to say, oh, you know, I only spend half a day in each park and be done in two days because that's just, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. And I think that's going to be, that's a, a big difference. And circling back to DPA though, we were having dinner or lunch at Agrabah and there were two American families and they were both talking about having the full package and DPA and still adding the, the, the seats for the Lion King show. So they were just spending money left and right and they couldn't care less. They were just like, let's just get everything done. Here we go. Which done ones can we still do? Oh, let's book a ticket for Lion King and go there. Yeah, but I think you're looking at a family that's probably doing a once in a lifetime trip. Yeah. And if you're doing a once in a lifetime trip, you're going to drop that money probably. And if it's, I mean, also I think for me, sometimes when I book something super early and then I go six months or eight months later, it feels free. I forget what I already paid. And then when you're there, you're kind of like, <laughs> oh, it's only 18 euros. You forget that you yeah. already paid like 2004. And so you're like, oh, it's 18 here, 50 here. Oh, it's fine. Like, I'm just, it's different budget, different months. And I think Disney definitely plays on that. Like, they know people have paid so long ago, they don't remember what they paid. And so the touring plans who, actually has a whole whole calculation on that. They they show adds, you who adds it all in real time. Like, oh, how much do we pay for a package when we book eight months ago? People are just I, like, oh, well, I know. think I think in Paris that's that's a lot easier to do than than in the American parks with Genie Plus because Genie Plus, like, what are you paying? You're gonna pay like sixteen to twenty nine dollars a day, 
and that's it like it's daily you've got whatever you can do in a day in paris those things start adding up real fast if you're buying them individual and if you yeah. open it, it's like some crazy prices sometimes, yeah. like 119. <laughs> like, the, the, like the Genie Plus is a much better deal than DPA. Like, the, like just on paper, it's like it gets up to like $20. Or if you buy in advance, you could pay, you can pay like, you know, for Disneyland, you can buy it in advance for like $20, fixed rate, whatever. So like, and then you just, you're using fast passes again, basically. Whereas in, in uh, in Disneyland Paris, it's like either you buy one and it's like eighteen euros, or like crush eighteen euros to go and crush, or if you buy a whole set for like ninety euros, and like the ni- ninety euros for like a set compared to like twenty dollars for a set is like mm. that's a big difference. It's extortionate, it really is. I just think you know, I I maybe because that's just how I've always remembered it, sort of growing up and whatnot, but. I just these new fast pass systems for me just ugh. and I know like from talking to um I've got some DBC friends um who live in Florida and like they like can't stand Genie Plus and obviously we're here hating on on you know what we've got as well it just kind of seems like what's there doesn't isn't really kind of working for anybody right now and I think it does come back again to that whole what kind of guest you are going to it because I know for a fact like if I'm you know, going to Walt Disney World or something. And I don't know if I'm going to be back. Okay, maybe not once in a lifetime. I don't know if I'm going to be back in maybe in a year or a couple of years. If there's something I want to do, I'm probably going to splash out and do it. And it's the same as probably what people do here. It all depends on what kind of business you are. Whereas people like us, like 18 euros, like no chance. I feel, Just I feel like it's about maybe like finding the right balance. Like I, if, if Disneyland Paris had an ultimate product that was 40 euros but only a certain number a day that you can only book like a few days before or on the day if there's some left and then that's it there's no more and the rest you have one by one for like 10 euros a day for whatever capacity is left from this 40 euro products i feel like that sounds like a fair deal but obviously they're getting as much money as they can because people pay and DPA Ultimate sells really well. Some days yeah, I also I also really don't like, and the US parks do this as well, where you kind of wake up one day and you've got no idea what that thing's going to cost today. Like yesterday, Big Thunder Mountain was costing, I don't know, like 14 euros. Today, well, surprise, it's 19. Have fun. I hate yeah. that. I yeah. just hate yeah. it. Yeah. Sorry, even in the States, I'm not even sure that they have um, I'm, as far as I'm aware, no, but do they have this whole idea of secure your seat or secure your access for like a show? No, they, they no. roll some they have things like into the Genie Dynamic Plus system. Packing. So Festival of the Lion King's rolled into Genie Plus. Um, and, Festival and of I know Fantasy's they, rolled into Genie Plus. I know they have like dining packages or whatever, but like even I feel like, I feel like just just saying, okay, now you need a fast, if you want to get into the show, now we're going to, you, know, you can get a fast pass or blah, 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 or like Genie Plus or Lightning Lane or whatever they want to say. Whereas, like, I feel like the whole, like, thing where it's like, oh, secure your seat, don't forget to, like, buy your ticket. And the way, the way it's, I don't know how it's worded, but the way it's just worded, it's kind of like, it kind of, it's, it's, it's honest, but it's also, wait, so I need to buy yeah, a ticket to get into I've this? seen, and I've like, seen a lot of people I'm, on Facebook groups going, like, so I have to pay 15 euros to go yeah, see yeah, the yeah. Lion King show? Like, no, you don't it's have to, idea. but... Mm. Well, without actually saying it, it kind of leads you to maybe question that. And, you know, some people for some people who aren't just going to bat an eyelid, they probably will just go, you know what, just click. Yeah. I don't want to miss that. But it's just another thing that makes... There's somebody, there's a US journalist, um, what's her name, Carly, Carly Weisel, who keeps saying that going to the parks is just becoming complicated now and like you see it everything is becoming a little bit more complicated like the whole secure your seat thing like you were saying it, it's an easy enough system to understand but you have to read about it it was never the way you you shouldn't have to read about going to see a show that's ridiculous yeah i mean you used to just show up to the fast pass machine and either you could have one or you couldn't yeah. yeah, you look. You looked up at the board. You looked up at the board, and it said like seven o'clock. And you're like, mm, no, too far. And you're like, no, I'll be gone for sure. I'll go. Uh, moving on. <laughs> the last thing we got in March was uh, the first. Still in March. <laughs> the, it was still in March. Yes, 
uh, for the Disney Village uh, remodel. And so the first concept thought that we got was like that marina on the other side of Rainforest Cafe. And we also got the concept talk for Rosalie, the new brasserie. <sighs> Disney Village, Disney Village, Disney Village. Why do we, I mean, it now, it now appears that the Rosalie concept art will be sort of the vibe of the entire village. Um, when we're talking about um, the, 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 you know, the, the bricks, wood, vegetation type of thing. I don't know. It kind of scares me a little bit, but also the other side on the marina, it looks kind of nice with some new shops. Uh, this whole thing is going to be done over like five years. So uh, it's going to be five years of construction and closed walkways. So and as you walk to the park, you'll walk between two walls and it will be delightful. Yeah. <laughs> like the project has been kind of downsized recently where they just going to like basically reskin all the facades, change some of the businesses and probably repave the thing and then you know, yeah, it what are we like going to like theme this shop to? We're going to theme it to coffee shop with white walls. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, no, but like my my main issue, my main issue with Disney Village isn't how it looks; it's what's in it. It's just yeah. that there's yeah. nothing in there that I want to do. So, like, it, they can make like the most bland shopping center outlet vibe that they can imagine. I don't care if they have stuff in there that I want to do. That's what I care about. I want to go in and I want to. Yeah. You know, I want to go like in like oh, I can catch a show, or I can go bowling, or I can go and have like a really unique dining experience, or I can go to like a cheesecake cheesecake factory, and that's like something that you can only do in part in this part of like like in this part of the world. Like you can only go to this restaurant here, or like things like that. Or I would just want to like stroll, enjoy the vibes. Oh, it's like this, like you know, that's the whole thing. Because like I've, I've said it before in the podcast, and I'll say it again. I don't think I've only I've been to. Um, Disney Town in Shanghai, which was really nice, and uh, Downtown Disney in California. Downtown Disney is not winning any prizes for like how it looks, but like you can actually spend a nice time there, and you can like browse and look at things, and there's like options for you to do things. That's what I want. I want in Disney Village. I don't really care what what look what it looks like. I just want to go in and have like a fun time. Yeah, it's tough because we also have the Valderop Mall, which is just next door. And so all the big brands are, a lot of them are already established over there. Um, but I don't think it needs big brands, right? Like, it just needs fun experiences. I also like, have, like an adult merch perspective, like you, Disney has collaborations with, I mean, come on, like everybody. I mean, having yeah. one place where you could go and get all of those Disney collaborations for like adults would be huge. Or like just have those brands, but in smaller shops, selling mostly those collaboration and a few basics. Like yeah, a, like yeah. Uniqlo, for example, has a lot of the Disney collaborations. And you could have a Uniqlo store that has some of their basics on one wall, but like most of the shop would be all their collaboration with Disney. Uh, probably right. not my could, mark. I don't know if like maybe like a bit too You far. can have other things like, um, like you got in California and, and Orlando, you've got Trader Sounds, I know it's in a hotel there, but hey, throw it in Disney Village. Why not? Yeah. You know, let's have like a like a jazz bar or something. I don't know, like just a whole Central bunch of fun experiences that I can't do somewhere else. Yeah. Central Paris has a lot of really cool bakeries. You know, Cédric Gollet is like this really acclaimed French uh, pastry chef that makes those amazing things. And he's done stuff with Disney in Paris before. Uh, for and I cost 17 euros for like a one cake. <laughs> I know, but they are really amazing, though, and very unique, and I think a lot of people will enjoy that. You know? well, I, that was a big announcement in D23, right? Remember for Disney oh, World? Yeah, we yeah, got the pastry. We even got the, the pastry. We got, we got lunch provided. That was yeah. my lunch, yeah. <laughs> That's going to work. Yeah. yeah, and so, and I mean, come on. In France, how many, there's a lot of great pastry chefs that make a lot of really cool things and are opening a lot of new branches. Come on. But that's why that's why I'm really excited for Rosalie because like the amount of times that I would say to people, oh, I just want to have like some French food or I just want to have like like oh roasted chicken and veg or like some like random things like that. Like French brasseries are actually like you know, you can go to like a French brasserie and like get like a pretty nice meal for like yeah. not not gourmet prices. I know you're not gonna be <laughs> yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> no, I know you're not gonna get it cheap, but you like it's just even to have a bit of variety, like to have something yeah. that's a bit like 
Because, like, personally, and this is going to just, I, I don't want to be like, I, don't, I'm, I know we're jumping to the sandbar, but, like, King Ludwig's was never a place that I would ever want to eat because I don't think, oh, a German pub, I really want to go and have German food because, like, that's just not how I'm wired, personally. And even, like, on the Disney cruise that I've been on, like, Rapunzel's is, like, German food inspired and it's by far the thing I like eating the, le- the least on, like, that cruise, whatever. So, like, I'm not wired to be like, I know people are like, oh, you can get chicken and potatoes on King Ludwig's, but it's never somewhere that I'm going to think about wanting to go. Whereas, like, Rosalie, it looks like, a, like the vibe looks nice outside. It's like a brasserie and blah, blah, blah. And that's something that I'm much more, and I think lots of other guests as well are much more kind of like, oh, I know what that is. I can I can probably find something to eat here. Or, like, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait. I'm, I'm really excited for Rosalie. I think it's going to be, like, something different. Like in the in the packaging, that's different as well. That's gonna be nice. And construction is gonna start in January on that, so you know, we'll see. It's gonna come out pretty soon. Um, the last thing we will mention in March, and then promise we'll move on, is uh, new outfits in the Disney hotels. Uh, Minnie and Mickey and Goofy started in Route sixty six outfits back in March, and it's really nice to see the hotels kind of step up and creating some unique experiences that you can only have there instead of just having, you know, basic normal costumes. Uh, it's nice that they have characters. It's even nicer that they have all those unique costumes that are just in everywhere in hotels. Uh, I feel like hotels have gotten more budget and a new direction recently. Um, it does help to somewhat justify the insane prices. Um, especially, especially for the, like, the budget hotels like Santa Fe and Cheyenne. Yeah. they are not cheap and you get a quite a cheap experience i think yeah yeah so speak to them all right let's move on to april before we run out of you know all our time um and april, character dining came back because that's another thing you know uh stars on parade came back in january but character dining actually didn't come back till april um or bears the saint Leon will reopen and plaza gardens now these things feel like they've been around forever again but it's actually has been only about nine months uh, or eight months since they came back after the pandemic. Um, and so, yeah, it's been nice to have them back. I think there's still a lot of issues with the food. Even the it was nice to have them back at a price that was semi-reasonable. So let's get back, let's, <laughs> let's talk about back that at a reasonable price. Let's get, talk about that in part two. Yeah, we're we'll talking about that. This, is, this is a preview for December. Yeah, yeah. Get ready. Tune in tomorrow, happy. kids. <laughs> I'm not happy. Let's talk about it. Um, and of course, when you're talking about April, we can't forget April 12th. And so um, it was obviously the anniversary, and we got something different this year. Uh, everyone was asking nonstop if there was going to be a giant parade. Well, the answer was no, because no one paid for it. And but instead, but you got a flag. Oh, well, you got a flag. <laughs> no, no, listen. I, know I thought it was not, cute. It I was know cute. they're not like. I'm joking. They're, they're, you know, Tom Collis from New, Disney World News Today was there and wrote that it was like the best experience he's ever had on an anniversary day. And fine, there's no, there's no new fancy costumes or floats or a two-hour-long parade, but. It was actually really nice. Um, they took inspiration from all the reopenings, gave people flags, the customers were waving on the sides. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I liked I liked the park map. The park map was super cool. Like when oh, you yeah. opened it up and it was the 92 park map and you like revealed the current yeah. one. That, that, was, that was fun. I like that. And you know what? I don't know if you really need that much more. There was there was heart and emotion. Yeah, but it was a t-shirt. Sure. No, that was Ben. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was a T-shirt and a Pandora charm. Oh yeah, that was a T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Um, something else I that still haven't worn it. Something else that we got to experience. Um, well, all of us actually, as a you know, there was the the um, the Imagineering conference at Hotel New York, yeah. and they brought in as many Imagineers as they could uh, from the design of the park um, on stage, including Tony Baxter. Uh, Tom Morris, um, Eddie Sutton wasn't there, but uh, who else was there? Anyways, there he, was, sent, those... he sent in a little video message, though, at least. Tim yeah, Delaney, and, um, friend of the pod. Get, uh, we get to hear from them. I mean, you know, um, Tony Baxter said the same stories over and over again, but fair enough. How many, how many stories can you tell? You know, I think we've but you heard... got you got some nice stories from um, Tim Delaney and Tom Morris. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Delaney's 
awesome. If you um, if you haven't listened to our podcast with him, uh, you could, it was like it was like a three episode podcast. He was just yeah, we we split into three. It was a really cool discussion. He's a legend. He's so good. He's His so wife good. was calling him, and he was like, "No, just one moment. I'm gonna finish this and tell you another six stories." And we're like, "It's midnight, but I mean, we're here." It's right? like midnight. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't listened to that one, it was during the pandemic. I can't remember. It's from last season. Uh, Tim Blaney, awesome uh, guy, and uh, very passionate about telling other stories. Um, so that was nice. It was a nice April 12th, and it was nice to get you know all the fans together in the park and the Imagineers took some photos on the on, you know the Castle Hill and all this. Um, so it was very nice. Um, we also got to see. Uh, back in April, we got to see uh, the first new concept art for the Walt Disney Studios expansion in a while, um, and it was the Lakeside Restaurant. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and also gave us an idea of what the style of those buildings are going to be. Of course, when they release things like that, it's because they know that the, uh, the blueprints are going to be made public under French law. So it was. I feel like it was a bit of a forced release, like why are you why you're disclosing this concept art of this one restaurant but probably that looks really but, cool though yeah it reminds me of you know uh central paris gardens meets uh shanghai disneyland hotel a uh, bit of art nouveau bit of like you know this like park so like turn of the century paris park inspiration um i guess this is what they're going to be going for as a whole for the entire uh, lake area, I guess. Um, and also in front of the restaurant, you have a lake view for the shows. Next to the restaurants, there's some bleachers and you know the control room and everything. So it looks like the shows are gonna be best enjoy from that side of the lake, because I'm sure there'll be 360, but it seems like most of the seating is on that side. Um, so it'll be nice. I think it's gonna be a character experience, um, likely princesses to go with the avenue uh, that is leading up to it. We've got some more art for that um, later in the year, so we'll, we'll talk about that again. But it was nice. It was nice to see it. We also saw the new logo for the Disneyland Hotel, which is not that great. Um, <laughs> you know. With the little but stars not, underneath it. Yeah. It's also something that's been going on basically all year is that Disneyland Hotel refurbishment. There's really not that much to say because, you know, the roofs have been gutted and redone, the facade have been repainted, the windows have been changed. You know. The thing the thing with that is it's like it was designed to be like this beautiful entrance to the park, which it really is. But at the moment, it's not. It's no. quite it's quite ugly walking into the park at the moment. And all the lights are off at night and very dark. Yeah. yeah. I get it. I so mean, so when they have them. to refurbish it, you know, it, it just, that entrance doesn't look that great, which is sad because it is, it, no, it's fantastic. It, you know, when we get it back, it'll be beautiful. But. It is also kind of bit of like the result of the whole history of Disneyland Paris and the lack of investment is that they've waited 30 years where basically that Disneyland Hotel never got repainted. You know, they might have changed a window or two, but it never got repainted in, in 30 years. It's made of wood. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? So now they have to do this sort of in-depth thing. It's happened to most of the hotels. Um, and it's just where we are. I mean, there's no solution there. The money wasn't there. I, I feel like... It's just maybe... the most noticeable one because obviously they've they've sort of pinned the whole entrance of the park on it. Exactly. But I mean, if, what I'm saying is like, if if every few years they redo part, like a side of a wing or something, you know, that needs it, then there will never be a need to close the hotel for four years. So. Oh, wow, it will be by then, won't it? Wow. It will be four years by the time it reopens in, uh, in spring 24. It's a little bit crazy. Wait, then how, how long was the Hotel New York then? Because that was also still quite Two, a bit though. Of course, three, it's less of an eyesore. Yeah, maybe. 19, I think, right? 19 yeah, it was supposed yeah. to open in 20 so it didn't year extra. So, yeah. so it'll be a year and a half actually and then it became two and a half years okay well get less of an eyesore enjoy, that's true get ready to enjoy spending uh paying for this refurb everybody because i doubt uh, the most expensive hotel on site is going to get a lot more expensive yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. speaking of putting money aside. we should go to the next <laughs> option <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there'll ever be a room under a thousand euros in that hotel. 
maybe in like the death of January, you can get it for 800 or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. AP's got 20 euros more expensive, which I think is really funny. Which, anyway, which let's, is, which <laughs> you compared, ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> yeah, compared to, compared to what, what it will be, that's actually a good deal. Um, yeah, I was like, remember when know. everyone was super nervous? <laughs> They're like, oh my god, this is gonna be more expensive. It's like, oh, we just want twenty more. I'm like, okay, fine. But now, so, yeah. we'll talk again in March on our special episode about new EP. <laughs> um, <laughs> and finally, the biggest news of the month was that the Bella Notte toilets reopened, and they were very nice. TV, heated seating, where... USB chargers, right? All of that. <laughs> no, now, that would be an experience. No, they were closed for. I, I would think, DPA like, that. <laughs> it felt like they were closed for like three years. It took so long. Those those toilets refer to took way too long. I don't understand why they why they go so slow. And this so, is where this is where this 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 podcast literally went down the toilet because that's I that's the exact <laughs> point where we start getting obsessed yeah, with toilets. How we talk about you know only yeah. toilet. Uh, yeah. So. So the one thing I just noticed when we were there on December 10th with a couple of us, it was December 10th, right? I didn't even know anymore. I walked into, into those toilets and I only noticed it now, but I think after the refurbishment, they got those little, what is it, like a spoon on the door. So when the door is closed, you will not see yeah. the spoon, but when the door opens, you can see a little green dot. So you know yeah. the toilet is available. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's actually quite clever, oh, but yeah, I never yeah, noticed yeah, I've it. Seen those. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah. This- they started those um, at the Tower of Terror, the, at the Toilets of Terror, um, and then they also at the uh, Avengers Campus Toilets. Yeah. It's a quite cool clever, idea. though. Yeah. Yeah. It's very simple. It's just like a piece of metal, but just because the door moves, you know. And I think it's also like maybe not so much for men's, but for women that have a lot more stalls. It's nice that you don't have this awkward moment where I guess you're just walking down and be like, which one's open, which is not open, you know? So, I yeah. mean, who hasn't been there and like people have tried to open the door? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Let's move on to May. I like the very efficient for April. Actually, um, May started with May the 4th, which, fine. We got Boba Fett, and who was firing fireworks from the top of Starport. Why not? Right? That was cool. And we got the Boba Fett cookie and a couple other things. It was the, but, uh, the Boba Fett with the, with the TV show and stuff. Yeah, yeah, some synergy. You know, the synergy machine TV was activated. Yeah. <laughs> can I just say, right, can I just say, like, you know, in Hong Kong Disneyland, where they have, like, Star Wars launch bay and they have, like, whatever... Can we not just accept? And because instead of like trying to push for like, oh, we need to have Star Wars launch at Disneyland Paris, can we not just accept that? Can we not just like bring little Star Wars torches to the back of Discovery Land? And if you're really into Star Wars, you can just go down there and be like, oh, there's Boba Fett and shooting fireworks. Great. Like, can What's we not just make that? that? Can we not just make like Discovery Land our Star Wars land and just forget about Star Wars lands in December? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're getting Star Wars land anyway. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think it's. Uh... I don't think it's oh, a great know. Star Wars land though, because it's just it's just retrofitted and it feels retrofitted. It does. I feel like it, it was already I mean great. and like hyperspace mountain, like uh. Yeah, I mean that with the it's still got all the Columbiad on the cannon and all of that. Yeah. It's just like it none of this works. Like Star Tours yeah. works because it's always been there, but yeah. Right. Um talking about synergies. Uh, Doctor Strange came out, and Doctor Strange came out at Disney's Hotel New York uh, for some daily. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. It gets better. No, sorry. That's like you know what I mean. Like it's like <laughs> oh okay. No, but like we tend to forget that a few years ago there was none of that. Like Disneyland Paris had, like you know, if we had like we didn't even have merchandise from the movies that were coming out. <laughs> sure, I I feel like this is mostly Marvel because Encanto is still nowhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and will continue to be nowhere. But um, <laughs> um, the Avengers campus talking about Marvel was heating up in May, and uh, you know, May. Do you remember the obsession in May with the opening date? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. It was just insane. Everyone was going crazy. People were like, "It's going to open in summer." We're early May. 
we're mid-May, we're late May. Where's the date? Where's the dates? Uh, dates yeah, because people had to plan the holidays, right? <laughs> like people were date actually okay, like going, were hmm. canceled, pushed back. Um, I mean, it was insane that no one knew when Imagineering was going to get the land, when they were going to open, and everyone was trying to plan a summer. And like, I mean, we're talking like late May, and finally, they're like, it's July twenty. Um, <laughs> We just needed, yeah, like, a was... rogue VP on Twitter, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, no, no, that's that was how Guardians of the Galaxy happened. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right, yeah. I mean... We'll... I feel like of Nothing all the resorts, will... Paris would normally have that. <laughs> Nothing will ever beat the RERA display that closed <laughs> this one in Paris. Uh... <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> okay. Uh uh, like Disneyland know. Paris closed from tomorrow. And we were just like all sitting around going. People are like weird. on the mental platform being like, oh, is it? <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so we got new ads and we also got this uh conference at Comic Con with all the Imagineers. Um it was a really exciting month. We got to hear about you know all the design of the land with Beth Clapperton, uh, with uh, you know all the design team of Avengers Campus, there was a lot of hype. I think they did really well in terms of you know hyping up the land all the way to the opening. It feels like a distant memory, but it was only like May. Um, but finally, yeah, yeah, when they revealed that date, I feel like everyone took a giant breather, uh, and then we had to wait another month and some um, until it actually opened. Uh, but it, it was a really close call. They, you know, they made it, they did it. Um, another thing that happened in May was that, <laughs> this is my random item for May, uh, Catherine Powell came and visited and got hosted by the exec team. And she was just there by the control room and walking around the park. It was kind of an interesting moment. There was rumors that, you know, she was going to come back as like, I don't know what really because I feel like the savior. <laughs> CEO. I mean, <laughs> hey, you know what? Stranger things have happened. Stranger things and did <laughs> actually happens. And now Disney's looking for a new CEO in two years. And you what? Why the hell not? Why the hell not? Uh, I've got absolutely no idea where that's going. That's going to be. That would be, you know, that Taylor Swift song, like dressing for revenge. Uh, that, would be, <laughs> that would be Catherine Powell walking into the Disney CEO office in like her best pantsuit and mirrored sunglasses. Um, but yeah, talk about revenge on JPEG. But no, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was nice to see her in the park and uh, to see that she is not completely, you know, hating everyone at Disneyland Paris for what happened, which I guess it's not the fault, but yeah, it was nice to see her. Um, should we move on to June? <laughs> um, in June, of course, Avengers Campus hype heated up. Uh, we got to see uh, the food truck and some of the merchandise, and we also got to see what happened to Hero Diner to the uh, Café de Cascadeur. Um, and the reservation for Pim open, and everyone wanted one. It was the thing to have. <laughs> now I remember when they were of... like, "Oh, the land will be open, but maybe there won't be restaurants." So just so you all know that, <laughs> yeah. and we're like, "You can have a reservation, and, but and they're like, don't know yeah, so." Open. So, you know, like, like, you know, when you leave the land, though, that's it, you're finished. And I'm like, so bring snacks is what you're telling me to do? Like, I don't know. And then, oh, that was just <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, it turned out pretty okay in the end, everything was open, but yeah. Um, and, um, you know, the, oh, there was a beep there. Someone's got an email. Uh, the, um, um, the Cafe de Cascada, everyone was really hoping for a good Marvel tie in. And, I learned from that interview with a food guide and he was like, oh, let's just have Reuben sandwiches because it's like New York. And I'm like, what? but it's not. It's like, but, it's definitely Paris. <laughs> but what is New York in Avengers Campus at all? Like, do you know the background yeah. story of Avengers Campus? No. Do you know the, do you know anything? I think he just watched the Avengers really? film and sort of went, oh, this takes place in New York. I like those Reuben sandwiches I had when I went, ooh, yeah. let's do those. <laughs> but it doesn't take place in New York. Avengers no. 1 does. So many no, but, Avengers are, but not yeah, Avengers but Campus, nothing, of course. Nothing in Avengers Campus takes place. No, no, but I mean, yeah. like, he just, he was like, I need to de develop an Avengers menu. I will watch the first Avengers. 
Do you okay, know what? The easiest, <laughs> the easiest thing that they could have done was just absolutely bring it back with zero changes whatsoever and just called it like, oh, it's like Hero Burger and then that would have been fine because you'd have been like, great, great, whatever, who cares? Or like, great, literally, just... shawarma. Like, yeah, shawarma. Yeah. shawarma. <laughs> yes. I, like, <laughs> it's one of those ideas, like, when it's so obvious and it works so well, why are you looking for anything else? Just do it. We could have just got the Lion King feast for like in a different place, basically. We could get Casey going on hot dogs just across the road. <laughs> Lion King feast just in here. Literally, uh, my drop. Um, yeah. We, you know, I had a lot of hopes for food at Avengers Campus and I don't know, Matt. No. I think no, the I pizzas like... were fine. I, I, the pizza pizzas were fine. Were... Yeah. It's fine, but it's, it's also it's like fourteen euros a slice. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. a bit much. Yeah, yeah, like but then you have like, like, I get it that it's a Disney park, but in Val d'Or for fourteen euros, you get like an actual whole pizza that's made up to order in an oven for you. But with even your own I, ingredients. Even though yeah. I think it's like, even though I think it's garbage, I hate the food in the Avengers Campus. Apart from a pan potato kitchen, which is pretty good, but like even in Disneyland Park, in Disneyland Resort, in Disneyland. They have like slices of pizza, like galactic, or a galactic grill or whatever it is. Um, they have slices of pizza for like eight dollars. I'm like, who's paying eight dollars for like a slice of pizza? Well, apparently they were like, yeah, let's make Europeans pay fourteen. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous, Robbie. And the hot dogs. I mean, they have like noodle soups, but I mean, they're really yeah. salty yeah. and gingery. Like, I don't know. Like, do you do they try those things? Can they? You know, can they just? Bring like forty and guests also, in a kitchen yeah. and be like, try all those things. Tell us what you but, think. But then, it's really remember, to taste those things. There's also no oh. seating for the stuff, right? So you have to get your noodle yeah. soup and then you have to take it to go. Yeah, yeah. But, but then remember that, that we actually had that discussion with, with with Daniel Dokurd and with um, Natasha on the the twelfth as well, and they actually said, "Oh, we just tasted all the food. It tastes amazing. You guys are going to be blown away." Yeah. That's what they literally said. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, but he also yeah. said his like Disneyland Paris highlight was seeing Sequoia Lodge on fire. So, so people just want to watch Disney on Paris burn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's too bad. Like, I feel like they should have just, I don't know, I, you know, and seeing those interviews and seeing like those uh, those those reports about you know who makes the food and all, and it's all like you know older white men yeah. who are like oh yeah your chef great but like can we get that, some that blood in- <laughs> yeah that yeah. interview they published i i don't really know what they were expecting the reaction to be like oh we've got the guy who creates the food and you know you've got all these fans that are distributing it to going the food in Disneyland paris generally speaking isn't very good no no and and then, i don't like, know i don't last... know what they expected the reception to be were we supposed that to last... go oh now it all makes sense <laughs> That last question where he's like, so what's in what's in store for the future? Instead of being like, oh, we're working on like maybe like something that he could drop in, like, oh, I'm working on something blah blah. blah. Oh, it's always a competition at Disneyland Paris, and that's what makes it exciting. I'm like, what 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 the hell was that? There was like, also that like, crazy line about um all oh, the Avengers campus really sets what we're going to be doing in the future. It's like great pizzas and hot dogs. No, that's, <laughs> where, that's the issue though, because that's what we were all hoping for, that we would go into campus. And we would, this would be the, what we're going to see going forward. It's going to be new, fresh, different from what we've had. And it would pave the way for how we were going to move forward. And it was just like a step back in time. It was, it's such a disappointment. Like say, I will exempt Pim from that statement. But, it, but even, even the star dish in Pim, right? It's, it's a burger. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm not that, that's that amazed with the Pim food though. I mean, it's I nice, but I was kind of done. It's fine. No, they have nice, like they have like a lovely bacon mash, and then they have like Add, no, like no. What the literally that when we were there, like around the opening, and I would say me and Jack have probably ate at Pim maybe eight times or so now, and yeah, yeah. Wow. I, okay, <laughs> okay, but like for me, like the Disneyland Paris food is not it, and Pim is like the best meal I'm gonna get. Mm. So if I uh, like, if dogs. I, I'm gonna have a night, like if I'm gonna have one meal on the holiday that I'm gonna enjoy. Like Pim is like my best bet, like for having it. But yeah. so much of what was there at the very beginning is is just not 
is crazy. Yeah, going in November, it was mostly so you still had the the hot dog and the the burger, but then they sort of like this bacon mash just wasn't there anymore. It's replaced by the that. same seasonal uh, potato and truffle thing that's in every other buffet. Yeah. Well, it's too bad. I feel like they missed a good opportunity to make something different, and they really just kind of haven't really blown us away. But hey. And we're all a little bit optimistic because the 30th anniversary, generally speaking, we all came out of going, yeah, okay, this this feels good. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all these little things, right? If you look at the 30th, like with all the little ice creams and the ganache stuff that we're getting, that we had in Fantasyland, all that is great, but it's just like, it's one little tiny thing. And that's yeah. it. But, it's like, I'm just missing just... an overall strategy for everything. But, but I think to, 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 to just even to like complete what you were saying, I totally think that they just need to be doing little things everywhere. Yeah. And like, we're not looking for like a gourmet meal for 10 euros. Like, it's just like looking for some fun Instagrammable food that you're like, you can only get here. Like, you can't like, like not like a 10 euro sandwich that literally every bakery in France will do for like three times less the price. So you're like, oh, this is really expensive. Why am I buying it? Blah, blah, blah. Like they just need to do a tiny little bit everywhere instead of just being like, oh, okay. Like I like I love the, the, the cheesecake on the stick thing. I love it. It's so delicious. But they literally just like, oh, right, great. Well, it's going to put this in Avengers Campus and it's going to be regular chocolate. There you go. I'm like, I don't want the same thing everywhere all the time. I want to walk into somewhere and be like, hey, cool. Yeah, this is like fun or different or unique or whatever. They can have a core offering because that's what people want to eat. But like, just like, I don't know. They need to do more work in it. Alternatively, they could take out the yogurt and charge you a euro more. December, give me to December. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I feel like also uh, they tend to, as soon as something is, it's like you said, Patrick, for the cheesecake also happens for those little like cones with the mousse. It's like they were popular for Princess Week and then we got them for Halloween and then we got them for Christmas with different flavors. I'm like, okay, like it's fine, but why can't this just be a snack for Princess Week and you come up with something different and fun for Halloween? Like, why do we need to have the same thing in different flavor yeah, and I, color? And, and make sure you actually have it for that season as well. <laughs> like, don't don't come up with shit that, that it's not there the first week and then sells out the second week, right? I mean, yeah. come on. How many people have had the yeah. gin- gingerbread Christmas trees because literally every year I went to, we're like, no, we don't have them. I'm like, oh, there's only I one place once. that has them. No, well, but they had them on like different menus, right? But like I'm like yeah, they did, but only one place actually had them. I had this on so the first day. day. But that's really annoying in that, like, like, like another thing. In again, this is not specific to whatever month we're in. But like, I wish they would have like a little sticker that they could put on when they're like, instead of making me wait in a twenty minute line, they could be like, no, we don't have this, and then I can look and be like, no, nope, they don't have it, and I don't have to wait twenty minutes and get really aggro at a cast member who, fair Are enough, they, it's not their fault. Mostly right? now. No, mostly no. no. Well, the way to do it is they remove it from the display that's in front of the till. Mm-hmm. If they don't, well, and if they have it. the sticker, so it's like it's sticker the size of a like, watch. Yeah, yeah, they have the little have... sticker that says something like "coming soon" or something, just instead of "sold out." It's like, well, let's yeah, pretend that we soon. don't have it at all. <laughs> or they could just use mobile order, and we could look at their menus online, and we can know what they have. Right. No, the uh, mobile order at Disneyland Paris is a whole other topic. The moon. <laughs> my like all those space mountains is like me mm-hmm. walking across the Adventureland bridge with my mobile in one hand and my credit card in another, like typing out all my details. Has happened to me. <laughs> um, anyways, Doom was also Disneyland Paris Pride, new edition, and it was with Mika this year and Becky Hill. Hill? And I just remember Mika. That's it. And I the don't Eurovision the guy. Ones. And that Eurovision guy, uh, be loud. Um, That's it. It was a so it was a fun party, but I feel like outside of the performances, there was just nothing. Else. They, moved it, they moved it back to WDS this year, right? Yeah. Yes, because right. I guess well, you had the, the anniversary. Great. You had Sorry. the parade, right? You had the parade, yeah, and you had some merch. That was it. Yeah, there was the parade, which was kind of nice, yeah. but it was the same as the time before. It is, it is a nice. Yeah. It was a nice little parade, and it's been emotional because you see all the cast members like being proud and marching the parade, which is nice. And then, but mostly, it is kind of like a pop concert. 
Um, and again, I don't know, I don't know what they can do, what they want to do, what they're allowed to do different. Um, I feel like that's just going to be the way forward for these parties is that you have to march in the concert. Um, I had fun. You were there already, right? I was there. Yeah, yeah we had yeah. fun. It was, a, it was a great party. The, the only thing I really did not like that much was that people got quite rowdy at the end of the party. It's like start really? running into you and smoking and just a lot of booze. Yeah, but I mean, like that's the like the Electroland stuff. It's about the, the Electroland stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's I mean, like overall, it was, it was fun. Mika was great. I mean, I love Mika. I love Mika anyway. So that's good. Is Pride basically the new Electroland? <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's, definitely, there's definitely a movement at Disney executives, executive level uh, against. Uh, does DJ parties? So I think concerts are fine, but I don't think we'll but, see. But it works again. in Europe, though. It works in Europe, right? I mean, the European yeah. crowd has a lot more affinity maybe with Electro those Lane, things. Maybe Electroland in itself will come back one day as a special event, but I don't think they're going to be putting DJs in like you know, like the Halloween party didn't get DJ party this year. I, but I think I, I think DJs are fine to an extent, right? So on New Year's Eve, you're you're probably expecting a DJ. They're not one, in Central yeah. Plaza like they used to be where they did the whole Central Plaza. Like, oh, we're just going to make Main Street a rave now. I, I disagree with that. But when they had it in like um, Discovery and things like that, that yeah. was a good that was a good compromise. Because you can't avoid it if you want. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so Pride was nice, but I mean, curious to see what they're going to announce for this year and if it's just going to be exactly the same with different artists. But, you know, yeah. um, they should get Ricky Martin because that was a noise before. And uh, uh, in June, Disney's Hotel New York turned one already. Can you believe it's been like a year and a half now by the time this is December? Um, it's been open for a year and a half. Um, and so they had a little celebration, like some little snacks and stuff to celebrate the one year of the hotel. I think it's done pretty well overall. It has helped that the Disneyland Hotel is closed and that it's basically become the de facto flagship, gave it a lot of attention. Yeah. If the Disneyland Hotel was open, I feel like maybe it would have it wouldn't have been like that much tension on, on Hotel New York, but they've been working really well with Marvel recently. They just opened like they just refreshed the you know the gallery. It's little things, but you know, and I think uh, in that in that food interview they were talking about the Bleecker Street Lounge is going to get this new offering, some high tech stuff that they're working on. Um, the only thing though, I, I like I said in July with the press event there, I, it already was showing some wear and tear though, which is kind of yep. sad. Yeah, that Just is the year and it's like, yeah. yeah. I think um, they were so pressed for time that already I feel like when I was, uh, I was in a state in a room over there and uh, like, you know, the, the corner of the bathroom, you have some paint on the tiles. Like it's not a big deal ultimately, but this is like four plus star hotel that you pay a lot of yeah. money for. Like the paint shouldn't be put, you know, shouldn't like leak everywhere. And then some of the glass was like, you know, a bit chipped. Some of the furniture is already scratched. I think uh, you're, some you're of the doors to... are being wobbly, and the hallways have some wear and tear already. It's been only a year and a half, and I feel like maybe I don't know if they really use the top material, or like if the maintenance is really up to par. But yeah, it is yeah. already yeah, showing some your signs. Your point about the um, it's like the de facto flag, uh, flagship at the moment. That's going to be interesting in 2024 to see how popular it actually is. Yeah, because right mm -hmm. now you've got you've got an idea of how popular it is, but that's because some people just see the most expensive hotel and just they go, oh yeah, we should be staying there because it's the most expensive. Yeah, and I think you're going to lose that. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, and I mean, I think the Disneyland Hotel is going to be amazing, but don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, and I, Marvel Marvel's always going to do well because it's Marvel. Um, yeah, but Disneyland Hotel is going to be incredible. But I, I think it's going to be pretty um, incredible. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. And I mean, there's nothing else in 2024, so it better be because this is going to have to be the thing. <laughs> my organ will be up on eBay two months in advance. Sorry? Make, my organs will be up on eBay. <laughs> 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 make, 
Yeah. And make sure I can afford to stay there for a night. Uh, he's going to yeah, sell all her lounge time, fly right? bags and uh, half her hair. And, uh... <laughs> I guess they, I guess they feel like they won't have to do much with the Olympics in town. Like people will either come or not come. It'd be interesting. Know, is is the are the Olympics really a factor for Disneyland Paris? I think they. We have this I think they try. We did have that. I, I think they'll do some bits like to try and tie into it, right? Like there might be a meet and greet with Mickey and like I don't know, like tennis outfit or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, guys, we've finished June. The last thing I had on my list was those weird props. Remember when they put those props across from the uh, Toy Story Playland entrance, and it turns out there were like figures from some old float, and none well, yeah. of it was up to scale. That yeah, also happened in June fun. one day. <laughs> They're so random sometimes. But that is our wrap up of the first six months of 2022. And so it is the end of our first episode. I think we're about just an hour and a half. So perfect time for an episode uh, to end. But we will see you again in the next episode for July to December. There's a lot more to discuss. Um, So if, um, you know. And there's that rant coming. So you definitely want to tune in. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is the end of the first part of the year in review. Thank you, all of you guys, for being on the show, and we'll see you on the next episode for the other half of the year. Bye-bye. Bye bye. 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 When we flame together, the world shines brighter. <laughs> <laughs>